for single guards, and they had benches all the way around. And when we'd go in there and talk, we'd sit out on the bench, and this guard had a chair, and he'd come over and put his feet right in between us. And he'd want us to talk loud enough so he could hear us. Well, we couldn't say anything, we couldn't do anything. But one day, a, a guard come to the door, which is a little ways away, and called him over to the door. Well, while he was gone, Raymond talked real low and told me what he was going to do. And this guard come back, well, he got hostile, you know, about us not talking loud enough where he could hear us. And, oh, he kind of threatened, you know. And said, so I got up and told him, I'm not one of your prisoners. Don't be jumping on me. I'll talk the way I want to. And so he kind of got hostile at Raymond, and later on, next time we visit Raymond, Raymond was kind of beat up a little bit. But later on, this Mullins come to my door and showed me that ring, told me that he was a man just released from prison that day, and he told me Raymond's plans to plant some guns down next to the building under a little old bridge, a drain ditch bridge close to a wood pile, a lot of chips, and then they wanted me to leave a car or be in a car down in the woods with some guns. And I told this boy I didn't have any guns and didn't have no car on my own. I wouldn't leave it down there. But I said, tomorrow night I have a meet with Bonnie and Clyde, and I'll see if they will take my place. So the next night we went out and met Bonnie and Clyde. Clyde didn't much want to have anything to do with it because he had served time on that farm, and he said it's too dangerous. It says it's about 50 or 75 feet from the building, and he wouldn't go up there at all. And he didn't want to have anything to do with any rest of it. And Bonnie then, she was real happy about it. She clapped her hands and said, boy, says, that'd be good. We'll get Raymond out. Says, we won't go hungry anymore. Says, he'll really make the money. And so she kept kind of prodding him till he finally agreed to go down and run the roads and look the place over and see. And he said, uh, Mullins, go down there with him. And this was on Friday. I met him down close to Corsicana, this side of Corsicana, on Saturday. And uh, Clyde told me he would go through with everything but planting the guns. He says, I won't go down there close to that building. Of course, I can't admit that I went down and put the guns, but I'll say arrangement was made to plant the guns, put them in, and they was close enough to build and you could see three tier bunks and, and you could recognize men uh, walking back and forth there. Mullins recognized some of his friends because he was just out a few days. And there was a guard about less than 100 yards sitting in a tower reading a magazine and the bloodhound dog pen was just about 30 feet from where it was and they was just tearing the building up and this guard never looked up, and the guns was planted, and then they went back and went got to Clyde. And then I come back and picked up my car and come up here and picked Mildred up, and we went back on that Sunday and visited Raymond, and then's when I told him that everything was set up and the guns was where he wanted them, and, and that not me but Clyde and Bonnie would be waiting on him. The break was set for January 16, 1934, a Tuesday morning. Clyde and Bonnie are supposed to be sitting down in the woods waiting on him. Well, when they went down in the woods, got down to the, where they were clearing timber, Raymond jumped squads. See, the squad of men, each so many men with a man on a horse with a shotgun and a six-shooter, over so many men that he had kept in a certain area and watched them. Then there was a, what to call a high rider who set a way off with a high-powered rifle and he had a bunch of bloodhound dogs, and he had an inmate to take care of the dogs. In case somebody run out of one of these squads, he was free to shoot him at a long distance or chase him down on this horse. And they called him a high rider. Well, when Raymond jumped squads, he jumped squad from where he was over into the one that Joe Palmer went. The other fellow would had another one of the guns. See, he had two forty-five automatics. They jumped squads that way to make this guard call this high rider over where he'd hold his guns while he'd get out and whip Raymond and make him get back over in the other squad. And so when this high rider rode up, Joe ran over and caught his bridle reins of his horse and threw down on him, told him to put up his hand. Well, he didn't. He had this rifle down side of him, and he raised it up a little bit and, and hit Joe right, just skinned his head, kind of parted his hair with that bullet. Well, when he did that, Joe opened up on him, you know, 
and killed him, shot him off the horse. Of course, didn't kill him right then. He lived a day or two, I think. But Raymond shot this other guard in the leg. The magazine, the clip in his 45, you know, a little button on it, had uh, released, and when he pulled his gun up, the magazine fell out. So he only shot one one shot. So, and of course, all the rest of the guards fell off of their horses or took off across the field and left the men. Then, uh, when Clyde and them heard the shooting, they were out of sight down in the woods. But when they heard the shooting, they got out of the car and shot up through the top of the trees. And I asked Clyde what he'd done that for. He said, "Well, I said just let them know that somebody was down there. You know, they wouldn't run them down in the woods and kill them." And so they come down to the car. Well. Joe Palmer and Raymond was only supposed to be the only two that left. Well, there was two more boys joined them. Then one boy named French run out through the woods. Well, there was five actually that took off, but they caught French out in the woods later on that day. But these four went over and Clyde was in a coupe, one seated closed-in car. And Joe Palmer had his bleeding pretty bad, so they set him in the front seat, Bonnie and Clyde and uh, James Mullins. They were sitting in the front seat. Raymond, Hilton Bybee, and Henry Medford got in under the luggage compartment. They closed the door down, and so they got away. And they went on country roads all the way across the country to Hillsboro, Texas. Out the edge of Hillsboro, Clyde stopped to fill up his tank, and the attendant says, "Do you hear about the prison break?" And he said, "Clyde Barron Bonnie just liberated Raymond." He said, "He did." He said, yes, that Bonnie and Clyde went right in the dining room while they was eating breakfast and took Raymond, shot two guards, said one of them they wasn't expecting to live. And Clyde said, yeah, you don't say, you know, and he's talking to Clyde there and there's in prisoners, they're ex-prisoners on the back end. Mm -hmm.